Righto, Taliota champs, now you would not want to be buying an Ultrabook now because these 11th generation Ultrabooks are coming out and it's fair to say they are a lot better. So this does mean like XPS 13, I've already got a press release, they're doing it, XPS 13, all the premium sort of PC laptops, we're talking Ultrabooks here of course, and MacBook Pro 13, yes, you heard it, MacBook Pro 13, that looks like it's getting a go here because apparently the Apple Silicon MacBook is coming out this year and depending on what rumour you listen to, there may be a MacBook Pro 13 at the end of the year, not a 14, not a redesign, but a 13 and you may have the choice between Intel Intel and Apple Silicon or it's just going to be an Intel and a new redesign will come next year. So if it is true there is an Intel MacBook Pro and you know Tim Cook he actually said we had more Intel products in the pipeline and he, what, that was plural so if you have a look at the graph there it does say scalable from 7 to 28 watts and we all know Apple are the only ones that use that 28 watts. I'm thinking maybe there is another MacBook Pro 13 with Intel and just any laptop that's going to be using these, it's going to be really good. Now the salient points are new integrated graphics, so the Iris XE graphics. This is supposed to perform better than the MX330, is it? Yeah, integrated graphics. You'll be able to play AAA titles. We've seen Battlefield being played at around 30 FPS, 1080p. And you can imagine this is going to help with, you know, video editing, MacBook Pros, you know, XPS 13 for video editing. It's going to help out the better graphics. You can game on it now. And that's always been the struggle of integrated graphics. Yes, the Iris Plus were pretty good, you know, for more basic games. And yeah, you could play, you know, AAA at really low settings, maybe 720p. But now you might be able to play a few 1080p. We'll show you some benchmarks of what they reckon it is in a sec. Also, new AI capabilities. It is still 10 nanometer, but what they said is with the fin stack arrangement they have with this, it's more like 7 nanometers, even though it's still 10 nanometers, 10 plus plus or whatever it is. It is supposedly a new architecture, but it's based on Sunny Cove. So pretty much the same as Ice Lake, but a much better version. You know, better security, integrated Thunderbolt 4, PCI Gen 4 interface. So yes, PCI Express 4. Now I did ask, will you be able to put PCI Express 4 SSDs in here? So SSDs that can read and write beyond, you know, 3,000 megabytes per second, you know, 4,000, 5,000 megabytes per second. Well, you know, their answer was, well, they didn't know. <laughs> They'll get back. But I don't think it's fully PCI Express 4, the whole system. And that Thunderbolt 4 doesn't get any extra bandwidth. We know about Thunderbolt 4. I've made a video on it. You get an extra security protocol. You can actually wake from, you know, connected equipment now and encompasses, you know, USB 4. And they certified two meter cables as well, which you could already do that with Thunderbolt 3 anyway. New Wi-Fi 6 gig plus. Now they said the current versions do not support Wi-Fi 6E or 6 gigahertz, but they will eventually. So to be class one of these Evo laptops and they've done new branding, they're still Core i7, i5, whatever. You have to look for a G series, 11th series, G series. They've fixed the clock rates now. One of the problems with Ice Lake is they couldn't actually crank up the frequencies high enough. Now you can with these new 11th generation CPUs. Now these Evo laptops are focused at the premium segment, okay? And you have to meet a certain criteria and you have to get it certified from Intel to actually be called an Evo laptop. So if you get an Evo laptop, you know you're getting premium and it meets certain criteria like responsiveness anywhere, longer battery life, has to be more than nine hours, has to be instant wake, less than one seconds, has to have fast charging, four hours uses, 30 minutes on full HD, and then it has to have the best class connectivity like Wi-Fi 6, Gig Plus, Thunderbolt 4. It has to have all those things or it's not certified as Evo. So just look for Evo, you know you're getting a good product. So if we just have a look at this slide here, some performance upgrades. Yes, it's going to be faster for CPU, just overall battery life. You're going to be faster in games, better connectivity, you know, Thunderbolt 4, all that stuff. Improved AI. And by the way... Even though this is four cores, it is a quad core and AMD systems have 4,800 CPUs that are eight cores. This is supposed to be compared to that eight cores. And I've actually proven this. If you look at some of my videos with like Ice Lake CPUs, I exported 75 raw files from Lightroom to JPEGs. The four core 
Ice Lake CPU Ultrabook be the 8 core Ryzen system. And it's like 100% CPU hammered. Like you look at the usage, it's using 100% of the CPU. So the AMD is using 100% of 8 cores and the Intel system was using 100% of 4 cores. Yet the Intel system was faster at exporting. And you think, well, how does this happen? That's just nuts, right? How can four cores beat eight cores? And we're talking, you know, eight cores of AMD Ryzen system that can do, you know, 4,200 Cinebench and these things will only probably do 2,000 Cinebench or something. Well, that has to do with built-in optimization and hardware acceleration. I don't know what it's using. It might be using AVX512. It might just be using the AI built-in, like whatever it is neural engine whatever it is in there because actually adobe is supposed to be supporting that and like filters that use that sort of stuff hardware accelerated like that it's just gonna kill it so it doesn't matter you know four cores versus eight if the app is optimized it's going to be faster with these 11th generation cpus and that's how apple silicon is going to be too right i don't think apple silicon is just going to be fast on raw cpu speed i think it's just going to be fast with hardware acceleration using ai and and stuff like that that that's where this is heading to raw cpu power is there when you need it obviously the amd if you peg all cores and you're not using any hardware acceleration or ai or anything like that the amd is going to be faster but i think a lot of the stuff is going to be optimized and be very surprised and you're going to get killer battery life with this thing so uh, it's interesting this 11th generation um yeah definitely if you're going to get a laptop on ultrabook specifically yeah look out for these ones the evos and the MacBook Pro, oh, will you get the Apple Silicon one or this Intel one? That'll be interesting. This also means, because the graphics is so good, we might have ultra thin and light, you know, 15 inch laptops. I really want to see how this performs in content creation. Does this extra GPU power really help out? And can I use Ultrabook for video editing, 4K, 6K, whatever? So we'll find out. Catch you next one. Telly, oh. We're excited to launch the world's best processor for thin and light laptops, our 11th gen Intel Core processor. The 11th gen Core processor is the best processor Intel has ever built. It's the best processor on the market. And all of that comes in super sleek, ultra thin and light designs like you see here from six of our top OEM partners, including Acer, Dell, HP, and Lenovo. With today's launch of our 11th gen core processor, I'm thrilled to announce the next edition of our Project Athena based laptops. We could not do this alone. We're proud that more than 150 partners are now part of the program. The impact of 11th gen core and Project Athena are profound, but together they are exceptional. So exceptional that they deserve their own platform brand. Today, I'm thrilled to introduce Intel Evo. Intel Evo is something entirely new. It starts with a product foundation, 11th gen core, and then we layer on thousands of hours of co-engineering work via Project Athena. Intel has only had two major brand transitions in its entire history. The first in 1969 and again in 2006. And we strategically chose those times to represent pivotal moments in our history. And today, we're doing it again. Say hello to the new Intel.